What's up, Blue Jay fans? Rob Scott of the Jay Talking Podcast back again. Doing a little rant this time. Uh, Nate Pearson, one of my favorite topics of late. Um, it, this is based around what I heard last night. It really triggered me. Let's, let's put it that way. Dan Shulman, on the broadcast, made a statement that Nate Pearson, his job right now, is to make sure the Blue Jays keep him on this roster. For when when somebody's ready to come up, it's his job to make it make, make the Blue Jays keep him here. He then repeated that and threw in Mitch White as someone Nate Pearson has to fight off. I find this insulting. I find this absurd. This line of reasoning is absurd absurd. And I want to tell you something. We have, uh, collectively, as a fan base, and I include myself in this, this is not signaling anybody out, we have fallen for a narrative around Nate Pearson that is not true, and it's built on bullshit. It is not true. Nate Pearson, the, the narrative is Nate Pearson is unreliable. The Nate, Nate Pearson walks too many batters. Nate Pearson is injured too much. That part might be true. The rest of it is bullshit. And I'm tired of hearing it. And I'm tired of this idea that Nate Pearson has this cloud around him. And unless he is perfect, he's always under threat of being sent back down. With this bullpen, which is ranked about 15th in the league, this bullpen, which has holes in it, clearly, Anthony Bass. Let's just talk Anthony Bass. Forget everybody else. That Nate Pearson, the best arm in this system, still at just 26 years old, the best arm in the current Major League bullpen, is under threat of being sent down? Why are we thinking this? Why is this a thought in Dan Shulman's head? Why is this a thought in management's head? I'm going to run through the numbers to tell you why this narrative is bunk. And most of us have fallen for it. Again, me included for a while. Uh, so in 2020, uh, let's start with this. Nate Pearson's minor league career, mixed between being a starter and a reliever, was dominant. Dominant. Okay, so anybody who goes back to his minor league and says, yeah, but... You know, you can even look into that. No, 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 you can't. His minor league numbers are dominant. In 177 and two-thirds innings pitch between a starter and a relief role, Nate Pearson has a 2.68 ERA and 0.94 whip. He's walked 2.9 players per, per nine innings. He has struck out 11.4. So you can go, well, the 2.9 walks per nine is high. Yep, it is. I agree with you that. Nate Pearson walks too many people, but he gives up 5.5 hits per nine. So it's not just about walks when you're looking at this pitcher. When he's also extraordinarily difficult to hit, and he comes out with a 0.94 whip in his minor league career, tell me one pitcher... One pitcher ever anywhere who had a 0.94 whip that we worried about their command, that we labeled them as unreliable and with poor command. Nobody, nobody with a 0.94 whip do you talk to like that. So that's his minor league numbers. Okay, let's advance. And in 2020, he was the number seven ranked prospect by Baseball America. In 2021, he was the 14th ranked prospect by Baseball America. In 2021, he made his um, first appearance with the Blue Jays on May 9th. In two and a third innings, he gave up four hits, three earned runs, five walks. Awful. He took the loss. And that was the last we saw of Nate Pearson that season until September 3rd. So he was awful, that appearance. On September 3rd, his first appearance, 
He tossed one inning. He gave up three hits. Two runs, one earned, no walks. Not good. So his first two appearance with the Blue Jays in 2021, um, he pitched a total of three and a third innings, gave up seven hits, three runs, uh, four earned runs, five walks, didn't strike out a batter. From that point on, finishing out September, Nate Pearson tossed 11 and two-thirds innings, gave up seven hits, three runs, seven walks, still way too many, and struck out 18. That is a 2.41 ERA and 1.25 whip. So he had two poor appearances and then finished out September with a 2.41 ERA, a 1.25 whip over his final 11 and two thirds innings. Excellent. We then did not see him again in, two th in 2022 because of injury. In 2023, he has now been converted to a reliever. Here's what sold me on Nate Pearson to know this guy's for real now. Nate Pearson said he, he, he lost something mentally in the game a, a drive a fire a passion and if you don't have that you don't succeed at this level so when i read about him that he loved being a reliever he loved being in that situation those high leverage situations i knew i knew he would be all right i knew he could be trusted because the fire was back the drive the interest was there and he still had dominant stuff. And he was still just 26 years old. Uh, essentially a prospect. Essentially a prospect. In the Winter League, he went to the Winter League, 2022-2023. In the Winter League, in 12 games, 12 innings pitched, he gave up 5 hits, no runs, 4 walks, 16 Ks. He then was sent to AAA after spring training, during spring training. In AAA, he pitched eight games, adding on again to his brilliant minor league career. Tossed eight and a third innings, gave up five hits, two runs, five walks, 16 Ks. Okay? Very, very good numbers. Now he comes up in MLB, and his four and a third innings since being returned to MLB he has four and a third, three hits, no runs, no walks, five Ks. Nate Pearson has dominated at every level he's pitched, except the major leagues. His major league numbers overall. So, so we built this narrative against Nate Pearson on just 33 innings. 33 innings. We didn't even give this guy a chance to become a major league pitcher. 33 innings, the seventh ranked prospect in baseball. We basically cast it aside. This guy doesn't have it on 33 innings, a brilliant minor league career, 33 major leagues inning, innings. His major league totals now are two and one with a 4.85 ERA, excuse me, 4.58 ERA, 1.50 whip, in 37 and a third, 31 hits, 25 walks, again, absurd amount, 41 Ks, and he hit one batter. But in his last, but, but covering the last 43% of those innings, 16 innings, so Nate Pearson's last 16 innings in Major League Baseball, he's given up 10 hits, 3 runs, 7 walks, 23 Ks, and he's hit a batter. That's a 1.69 ERA and 1.12 whip in the last 43% of his career in Major League Baseball. So if, how are we having this conversation that Nate Pearson is always under threat of being sent back down? I don't understand it. We need bullpen help. This guy could be our best arm. And we're treating him like he's always under threat. I don't understand why or where it's coming from. If management has some sort of um, 
issue with him that they're doing this, that they're speaking like this. He should be, it, it should be said to Nate Pearson, dude, you are one of the best arms that we have. Uh, you are going to get as much rope as you need to hang yourself. To be pitching well like he's doing and, and then still issuing this, well, Mitch White, Mitch White, Mitch White is under, is putting Nate Pearson under threat. Are you kidding me? How are we having this conversation? It just, we've fallen for something that is not true. Nate Pearson in his last 16 innings of Major League Baseball has been a dominant reliever. A dominant reliever. And I don't care if he's walked seven batters in 16 innings because he is tough as hell to hit. So he makes it up in the other end. He's got a 1.12 whip in the last 43% of his Major League career. That is very, very good. It's not elite yet. I think it will get to elite. I, I'm watching him. He misses too many pitches off the plate. But he's also popping up a lot of guys. You can tell by the swings he's looking weak. He's making them uh, look weak. Which is very different than what Alec Manoa is doing cur currently. Nobody looks weak against Alec Manoa. He doesn't have anybody fooled. He doesn't have anybody out in front. He doesn't have weak swings. Nate Pearson has people looking weak on some of their swings, looking overpowered. 